Hollywood Studios has never looked so amazing, but are the most amazing parts about this park always the easiest to spot right from the get-go? Short answer, no way. So we're going to help you out by showing you the most terrific, wonderful, and all-around awesome parts of Hollywood Studios today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We are in Hollywood Studios today to revel in the glitz and the glamour and the amazing secrets of it all. While many of the best parts about Hollywood Studios you're not gonna have to dig for, other parts are a little less out in the open. They're kind of secret for the true Disney fans to come and figure out. By the way, that means you, you're the true fan. Now there's no better way to start than with the hush Hush mimosas. Morning cocktails and an ice cream shop? I can't think of a better way to kick off a video. While Hollywood Scoops off Sunset Boulevard is typically most known for its hand-scooped ice cream and over-the-top shakes, it also has some on-the-go breakfast options that you can order before getting on the rides. For food, you'll only have one option, but it's a good one. It's the waffle platter with Mickey-shaped waffles served with fresh blueberries, whipped cream, and syrup for around $10. And if you want something to help wash those waffles down, you can actually get a morning mimosa here too for $15. But if you're more of an I need my caffeine sort of early riser, freshly brewed Joffrey's coffee can also be purchased here too. So for years, I've been telling you to eat anywhere else in Hollywood Studios but Catalina Eddie's off of Sunset Boulevard. And I still stick by that unless you're a big puffy pizza fan, then ignore me completely. However, there is a reason a major reason you still need to go to this unassuming kiosk. Do y'all remember the glimmer and shimmer blondie that was introduced to the park during Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration? Yeah, that dessert was one of the best things to come out of that 18 month long celebration. Note that there was no blue food coloring anywhere included in that dessert. Now, even though the celebration has come and gone and most of the desserts from said celebration have disappeared into the great snack beyond, you can find a version of the glimmer and shimmer Blondie still hanging out at none other than Catalina Eddie's. Nowadays, the Glimmer and Shimmer Blondie goes by the name Toffee and Coconut Blondie, but you're still going to find it to be pretty much the same gooey toffee and toasted coconut blondie topped with salted caramel buttercream as before. And better yet, it still only costs around five bucks to try. So I've got lots of secrets about Tower of Terror to share with you today, but let's work our way backwards and start at the Tower of Terror gift shop first, located at the exit of the drop tower. Past the main section of Tower Hotel Gifts is an inconspicuous door leading to what was once a restaurant called the Sunset Room. Okay, so it was never an actual Disney World restaurant or anything, but the imagineering of this little area suggests that the last time the menu of this faux restaurant had been updated was October 31st, 1939, which, shock, just so happens to be the very day that, according to lore, the Hollywood Tower Hotel was struck by lightning. Dun, dun, dun. Now, while you can't dine at the Sunset Room, feel free to read over what the menu was supposed to have all those years ago, because it actually looks pretty delicious. Mm. Hey, Disney, can we turn this into a legit restaurant now? I think people would go. Now, a little DFB history for you. This is one of the first blog posts I ever wrote was of this menu at this particular location because I thought it was so cool and so hidden and that probably nobody looked at it as they were on their way out of the Tower of Terror and into the gift shop. So this is one of those things that I thought was real, real cool way back in the day when I started this blog like 15 years ago. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see if you were really paying attention during my last point with a little pop quiz. When did the Hollywood Tower Hotel get struck by lightning? Giving you the answer in three, two, one. If you said Halloween of 1939, then congratulations, you were paying attention. Or you're just a big Tower of Terror fan. Either way, we're proud of you. Because this hotel was struck by lightning back on Halloween night all those years ago, plunging it into the depths of the twilight zone, the hotel is now trapped perpetually in spooky, scary season. And that's why when you exit through the Tower Hotel gift store, you'll see peeking out of the display windows a couple of jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins there to greet you, forever celebrating a Halloween that's already come and gone. Okay, so that restaurant was a really, really old thing. This is a brand new thing. And we love new things, especially when they involve snacks. So Ice Cold Hydraulics has officially opened in Grand Avenue, which is 
you know, basically Muppet Courtyard, which I know it's not called Muppet Courtyard anymore, but in my heart it's Muppet Courtyard. And it serves both the standard Disney treats like ice cream bars and soft pretzels and popcorn, as well as some more unique options. Now, what unique options you might ask? Well, There's the candy painted cinnamon rolls, which are these mini cinnamon rolls topped with Coca-Cola infused glaze and toasted nuts. And there are the savory bouncing mini churros topped with Coca-Cola and bourbon candied bacon, sriracha aioli and scallions. You can also get alcoholic and non-alcoholic slushies here too. Overall, Hydraulics is a good place to stop if you need a light snack in the morning or if you want something to tide you over midday or if you're using snack credits for the Disney dining plan since those unique snacks options are on the pricier side of things. Now, are these good snacks? Well, the cinnamon rolls are okay. We would probably go for the savory bounce and mini churros. The churros themselves are still sugar cinnamon churros, but they've got that candied bacon and sriracha aioli, so it kind of elevates them a little bit pretty interesting. Worth a try. Now, if you're paying out of pocket for one of these snacks, just know that you can get a better cinnamon roll for cheaper elsewhere in Disney World, like the delicious one at Gaston's Tavern in Magic Kingdom. All hail Gaston's Tavern. Now, IDK if this is amazing per se, but it's certainly silly. During the finale of Fantasmic, characters from the show float past you on that big old boat with Captain Steamboat Willie behind the wheel. For the safety of these characters, they'll all head inside the boat to take cover right before the fireworks start to go off with one exception. One of the characters on the boat has no legs. This is Ariel in her mermaid form, and since she's flipping her fins, she's not gonna get too far, AKA she can't walk inside the boat like the rest of them. Thankfully, Prince Eric is there to save her tail, literally. No, he doesn't carry off his blushing mermaid bride. Instead, right before exiting the top of the boat himself, he wraps a flame retardant blanket over her so that she can be safely covered and protected from the fireworks. This action is affectionately called bagging the fish to cast members who are in the show. So next time you watch Fantasmic, keep an eye on Ariel and Prince Eric if you want to see it happen. Or don't if you don't want the magic of the moment spoiled for you. So there's a bar in Hollywood Studios that nobody talks about, not even Disney, and that bar is Oasis Canteen. Oasis Canteen, located in Echo Lake, right next to Indiana Jones' epic stunt spectacular, serves an assortment of mixed drinks and a full bar of options. Here you can find specialty cocktails themed around Indy and his adventures like the Lost Jewel made with vodka, peach schnapps, blue curacao, sweet and sour, and a souvenir glow cube. Snake Alley has rum, creme de banana, melon liqueur, sweet and sour and pineapple juice and the long lost island made with vodka rum gin triple sec sweet and sour sprite wild berry and a souvenir glow cube there's no dedicated seating for this walk-up counter but you'll at least find some benches nearby or better yet you can take your drinks with you inside the indiana jones show since indiana jones epic stunt spectacular is an outdoor venue so you're more than welcome to take food and beverages with you for a little snacking and show combo Before we keep going, I've got a little gift I want to give you because I'm just so excited about your Hollywood Studios trip and I want to help out in any way I can. Scan that QR code that you see on the screen right now or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Hollywood Studios and you're going to get our free Hollywood Studios quick guide filled with tons of easy to digest info all about the park's best restaurants and rides and entertainment and attractions that you're not going to want to miss out on. Okay, up next, who's ready to see some fresh changes come to Echo Lake in the next couple of weeks? Star Tours The Adventures Continue is getting new ride scenes based on characters and locations from Ahsoka, Andor, and The Mandalorian. These additions will start up officially on April 5th, 2024 at the beginning of Star Wars Season of the Force and will join an existing catalog of randomized sequences to create over 250 different ride experiences for Star Tours, which no other Disney ride has ever accomplished ever. So these new scenes are going to be added to the Star Tours rides over in Disneyland California and Disneyland Paris, as well as Hollywood Studios, making for an extreme Disney Plus takeover across the globe. We do expect the wait times for Star Wars to be a tiny bit higher than normal right after this change takes place. So if you're planning on going to Hollywood Studios sometime this spring, make sure to keep an eye on the Star Tours wait times via your My Disney Experience app. It might not be a walk-on for a little while. 
All right, where are my Muppets fans? If you're looking for the perfect photo op in Grand Avenue, I got you. In order to find this super secret photo op, head all the way to the back area of the Muppets section in the park, specifically over by where Muppet Vision 3D lets out. There are a few fun photo spots over here, but if you're looking for one that'll make your relatives raise their eyebrows, find the wet paint do not touch section. You see where this is going, right? Sit your happy rear end down in that yellow wet paint splatter and smile for the camera. Now, who remembers that wonderful old uh, photo op of the Singing in the Rain umbrella that you used to be able to stand under and that it would rain around you? That's old school MGM, y'all. So if you remember that, drop me a comment. When you're in line for Rise of the Resistance and you're finally at the part where your group is assigned to a certain color to stand on, stay alert because that assigned color is way more crucial than you may realize. If you're assigned to the blue or red group, you'll be sorted into the front transport vehicle. If you're assigned into the orange or white group, you'll be sorted into the back transport vehicle. Why is this important? Well, because your ride experience will be different depending on what vehicle you're sitting in. Not better or worse, just different. There are three key differences between the front and back transport vehicles. Early into the ride, the first difference will make itself known when a probe droid emerges, looking for the resistance prisoners. That's you, by the way. The front car will see the probe droid up close, while the back car just sort of passes by it when the droid is lowered. Then in the ADAT room, the front car goes through the ADATs and turns left, backing into the elevator with a view of Finn in his stormtrooper gear against a wall. After rising up, the front car will be face to face with two stormtroopers inside the head of the ADAT. Meanwhile, the back car moves through the ADATs and looks like it might actually escape the room through a large open door, but the door closes at the last second, whisking your vehicle backwards. This car also sees a fan animatronic, but he'll be sitting behind some crates, avoiding fire from the blasters. When this transport vehicle rises up on the elevator, you'll be looking at the side of the ADAT instead of face to face with it. The final difference happens both times that the ride encounters Kylo Ren. In both Kylo scenes, on the bridge, and at the ride's final showdown, the front car is to Kylo's left while the back car is to his right. The way the experience differs here is that Kylo turns different directions when addressing the riders. Not a huge difference, but still an interesting one. And while sometimes I'm cool with you kind of requesting the ride situation you get, like sometimes you can say on Big Thunder Round, no, I'd like to sit in the front or I'd like to sit in the back or whatever when the cast members aren't too busy. I probably wouldn't recommend doing that here because these First Order cast members probably aren't going to look too kindly on that. Okay, you want to get some good luck in Hollywood Studios? Don't worry, you don't have to pay for it. When you first enter the Black Spire Outpost, you're going to find that large obelisk sitting in the middle of the marketplace area, right across from the restrooms and the secret Dianoga. Now, according to Imagineering Managing Story Editor Margaret Carrison, if you touch this Batuan obelisk and say, till the spire, then it'll give you good luck so that you may return in good health to this place again. If you're someone who misses the old days of Hollywood Studios back when it was MGM Studios instead of Disney's Hollywood Studios, then you probably appreciate and are saddened by this little Easter egg like I am. At Baseline Tap House off Grand Avenue, you can order beer and wine in small bites while chilling outside and people watching the Hollywood Studios crowds from a safe distance. But the reason why I'll probably never get fully behind enjoying Baseline Tap House is because I remember what it once was. That lovely little place called By the Book and then Writer's Stop, made for writers and dreamers and me. The shop wasn't big, just a place that sold books and coffee and my beloved carrot cake cookie got its start here. But it was charming and peaceful and I miss it every day. Baseline Tap House, safe to say, isn't all that peaceful, especially during midday. However, what I do appreciate about it is that it's never truly forgotten its roots. If you look on the knickknack shelf hanging on the brick wall of this establishment, you might be able to spot a scattered assortment of metallic letters, among many other thingamabobs. If you find all the letters, you'll see what they spell out. An old familiar friend's name, Writer's Stop. This is actually the sign from the Writer's Stop originally. So I love that they've incorporated this into the next iteration of this location. Okay, fine. There's more to enjoy at Baseline than just the fact that it spells out Writer's Stop and makes me cry. You can also create your own beer flight here. For just over 13 bucks, you'll be able to pick out four beers currently on draft in five ounce pours. This way, you can try out a few different brews from Baseline instead of paying full price for a 16 ounce one that you may not wind up being too fond of. 
Now, attention Disney Visa card holders, because I got a special Hollywood Studios experience just for you. This is an exclusive situation that you can do in Hollywood Studios. Inside Star Wars Launch Bay at the Animation Courtyard, you're going to find several regular meet and greets going on for Star Wars fans, including BB-8 and Chewbacca and Darth Vader. But next to the BB-8 meet and greet, there's a small hallway with access to a Disney Visa card holders only meet and greet. Now, this probably changes up, but we mostly see Vader here, and it often has a much, much, much shorter line than the regular meetup. So make sure you've got your Disney Visa card handy if you want to use this little hack because that's going to be your key to the dark side. Sad news, the Voyage of the Little Mermaid stage show is permanently closed. Good news, it's currently being reimagined into a new Little Mermaid stage show that'll open this fall. The new Little Mermaid show, which will now be called The Little Mermaid, A Musical Adventure, will continue to be inspired by the original animated classic from Walt Disney Animation Studios, but will revitalize this beloved story of Ariel's journey from mermaid to human to mermaid and back again. The Little Mermaid, A Musical Adventure is going to premiere at the Animation Courtyard Theater, which is currently where the closed Voyage of the Little Mermaid show sits. When when it opens, we can expect musical numbers like Part of Your World, Poor Unfortunate Souls, and Kiss the Girl. Now that last song is going to be a new addition to the old show. So yes, there will be a couple of little changes. Now we'll make sure to let you know once we hear more about an exact opening date for this new Little Mermaid show because we're excited to see it too. If you find Edna Mode from the Incredibles franchise to be just as charming, witty, and slightly unsettling as I do, then you'll definitely want to meet her over at her super suit gallery in Hollywood Studios. This is kind of hidden in the back, so it can be hard to find, and you might not ever walk by it unless you're trying to. The Edna Mode meet and greet experience can be found in the teeny tiny Pixar Place sliver of the park, which is just past the Animation Courtyard and right before you get to Toy Story Land. So not only will you get to meet and take pictures with a fashionista that puts Cruella de Vil to shame, but you'll also get to see Edna's latest super suit designs because they're just as practical as they are fashionable. So often when we think about nighttime shows going on in Hollywood studios, we immediately think about Fantasmic. And for good reason, because that show is the biggest one and never fails to make me feel all warm and happy inside. And that isn't just because of the pyrotechnics. However, there are two more nighttime shows that you can catch in this park each evening, and these shows take place over at the Grauman's Chinese Theater. The first show is Disney Movie Magic, which explores Disney's long-standing history of live-action films. And the second is The Wonderful World of Animation, which explores the other big part of Disney Entertainment, the animation side of things. Both shows are about 10 minutes long, and they usually happen pretty close together. Like, on the day I'm writing this script, Disney Movie Magic is going to happen tonight at 8.10, and Wonderful World of Animation is going to happen at 8.30. That doesn't mean the same will be true during your trip, however, so make sure you're staying up to date on the My Disney Experience app on the day of your visit so you don't miss out on one or either of these shows if you want to see them. One of our favorite things to order in 50s Primetime Cafe is the PB&J milkshake. But for all you who are 21 plus and looking to add a little booziness to your PB&J experience, you're not going to need a 50s Primetime dining reservation. All you need to do is swing by the restaurant's attached bar, the Tune-In Lounge, and order yourself a Tune-In PB&J cocktail. This is made with peanut butter whiskey, blackberry brandy, and Bailey's Irish cream liqueur, then topped off with a maraschino cherry. Now, I'm not much of a whiskey drinker, but this cocktail is super heavy on the peanut butter flavoring, which makes it very creamy and smooth tasting. Overall, the balance of PB and blackberry is tasty, and the fact that you can order this drink to take on the go with you makes it all the more convenient and tempting. The Backlot Express Quick Service over in Echo Lake is designed to look and feel like an actual production warehouse. I love this place. But if you don't take the time to walk around the dining room and see all the pieces and parts that make up this warehouse, you're going to miss out on that fun imagineering. So let's take a quick tour together just to spot a few of these fun production pieces. First up on the tour, we've got the paint stations, where studio artists must just have been painting scenery and murals before they had to step away for a break. Hopefully the painters come back soon, though, because it looks like they got a whole lot of stark white sculptures in the sculpting area waiting to be brought to life with a nice coat of colors. Maybe. Next, we've got the whole area for stunt men and women, which you'll be able to spot quickly once you find the fully stocked medicine cabinet with bandages and pain relievers at the ready. Not real ones, though. You'll have to go to first aid at the front of the park for the actual stuff. 
The stunt crew also has blackboards with different diagrams sketched out, as well as stunt dummies sitting nearby, ready to step in and take one for the team. But some of my favorite details in this dining room are the flyers posted about, complete with safety in the workplace reminders and supply conservation signs. There's even the old office bulletin board for the paint department, displaying inter-team memos as well as personal notes from department members. Okay, that's enough touring for now. I'll leave you to explore the rest of this place during your next lunch or dinner here. I'm all for a good secret that breaks the fourth wall. So for this particular secret, we've got to go to another rarely talked about drink location in Hollywood Studios, PV's Polar Pipeline. PV's Polar Pipeline is over in Echo Lake and serves up the usual frozen Cokes and frozen lemonades, which of age guests can also choose to spike with a bit of rum or vodka for an extra cost. But the secret I want to talk about isn't PV's, but what's next to PV's? Next to this drink stand is a fake door marked Holly Vermont Realty with a window above that shows a loft for rent. Well, what's the significance of that? When the Disney brothers first settled in Hollywood, they actually did rent a loft above a business named Holly Vermont Realty. So this little facade represents where the Disney brothers once lived all those years ago. Getting to eat at Hollywood Brown Derby is amazing as is, since it's the best place to eat in the entire park, IMHO. But what makes it even more amazing is the history lining the dining room walls, literally. Inside Hollywood Brown Derby, you're going to see dozens and dozens and dozens of caricatures capturing the cartoony likenesses of big time movie stars. Now, check out the frames of these caricatures because they're significant. Any caricatures hanging in black frames are copies from the original Hollywood Brown Derby restaurants that once existed out in California. But the ones in the gold frames are the real deal, as in the original caricatures that once hung in the California famous restaurants way back when. Don't underestimate the leadership of a Wookiee under extreme Millennium Falcon circumstances, especially if that Wookiee happens to be Chewbacca. On Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, you and a crew of five others will team up and take on a series of tasks to help Hondo and Aka collect coaxium canisters from around the galaxy. Now, as much as we love hearing Hondo diss us for hitting obstacles and missing straight shots as if the stormtroopers didn't do that first, there's a way to unlock an even better co-pilot for your mission, Chewbacca himself. No kind of luck is going to bring Chewie into the cockpit, though, so you and your team will have to follow some pretty exact rules to pull this co-pilot switcheroo off. Here's how it's done. First, both pilots need to move their controls to the far left or right or the far up and down, depending on your position, before pushing the activation button. Then, the rest of the crew needs to hit one of the white buttons on their controls before hitting the orange activation button. Do all this before the cast member secures the cabin and clears you for takeoff and you'll be taking a flight with Chewy himself. Here's to hoping someone in your team knows how to speak Wookiee. There's just a whole lot of silly, goofy Muppet chaos going on at Pizza Rizzo, which is why we still love this quick service, even if the food here is only so-so. So here's the Pizza Rizzo backstory. This two-story eatery is supposed to mimic a grungy New York pizzeria run by none other than Rizzo the Rat, although my years in New York, I've never seen a pizzeria this big. Anyway, each story of this eatery takes on a different vibe. On the first floor, things are pretty restaurant standard, with little Muppets jokes and gags featured on the signs and pictures hanging about. But on the second floor, you got Rizzo's Deluxe Supreme Banquet Hall, where a wedding reception for Gil and Lil, daughter of Will and Jill, and son of Phil and Bill, is about to take place. On the second floor, you'll find chandeliers and drapes on the ceiling, detailed gold back chairs lined up across the table, tables, and a wooden dance floor in the middle of the room, complete with a disco ball hanging overhead. Even if you don't want to eat a full meal here, you might still want to grab a quick snack or dessert so you can explore Pizza Rizzo and appreciate its quick-witted humor, especially if you've got a Muppets fan in your family. Or you are the Muppets fan in your family. Or both. And don't forget to swing by the front of this restaurant again at night. See that neon Pizza Rizzo sign, the one that claims to be the city's top-rated pizza? Well, when the sun goes down, the sign gives way to the truth behind this establishment. Watch the sign flash off and on to reveal that, yep, it's rat pizza that you're going to find here. Though honestly, if Remy can be a five-star chef, then why can't Rizzo?
Step aside, Mickey. It is time for Oswald the Lucky Rabbit to finally get his chance to shine. Now, over at Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Toy Story Land, cast members have confirmed that you can find not one, but two hidden Oswalds inside the restaurant. A hidden reference to one of Walt Disney's very first characters, even before Mickey Mouse, is always a good find. Now, one hidden Oswald appears in the amazing Rope and Woody picture. The knot on the rope creates the center of Oswald's head, and the two pieces of rope that are sticking up create his years. And while we've debated where the other hidden Oswald might be hiding out, we've narrowed it down to two potential options. Either A, it's the tie of Stinky Pete's ascot, or it's the tie on Woody's bandana where he's riding bullseye. I don't know. Which one do you think makes a better Oswald? Let me know in the comments so we can get this mystery solved. Next is that controversial rodent and mallard meet and greet. After the Disney parks reopened in 2020, a lot of things majorly changed, especially when it came to how we interacted with characters. During this time of uncertainty, character meetings became character sightings. And while it was sad to not be able to hug or chat with our favorite friends face to face, it was entertaining to see the shenanigans they got up to. This included Chip and Dale and Donald and Daisy over at Hollywood Studios, who would often have cutesy picnics in the grass in front of the Grauman's Chinese Theater. But just recently, Chip and Dale and Donald and Daisy have returned to their regularly scheduled meet and in the park, to the excitement and dismay of Benny. Sure, it's nice to have one-on-one -on -one convos with these dynamic duos again, but many of y'all out there sure do miss these guys with their little picnic basket and checkered blanket and acorn props and extra doses of Daisy's sass when she's had it up to here with Donald's temper. If you want to see these characters during your next visit, check the My Disney Experience app to see where they're chilling while you're there. Most of the time, you can watch them wandering around Echo Lake, not too terribly far away from where they used to picnic. Why just track down air conditioning on a hot floor today when you could track down a full-on snowstorm? For the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration takes the beloved characters and story of Frozen to a whole new level, where you and any little Annas and Elsas and Kristoffs out there can join in the show by singing along. And if this show wasn't already interactive enough, the grand finale is even more immersive as Elsa does the magic and makes it snow across the theater. Super fun! Now getting sidetracked here, does anyone else remember when the first Frozen movie came out and Hollywood Studios hosted a full-on Frozen summer fun event? That's actually when the Frozen sing-along first premiered in the park, but along with that premiere, we also got a lot of other snow in the summer activities, including a full-on ice skating rink and a Frozen-themed DJ party that took place daily over by the old Sorcerer's Hat icon stage. Yeah, I'm that old. Maybe you are too. <laughs> To guarantee the best view of Fantasmic during your Hollywood Studios night, you might want to look into booking a Fantasmic dining package. The Fantasmic dining package offers a meal at a participating restaurant in Disney's Hollywood Studios and reserved VIP seating for one of the showings of Fantasmic during the night of your visit. But here's something all you Disney dining plan folks are going to want to know. You can actually use a table service credit on this dining package, meaning you can get a full meal and priority seating for the nighttime spectacular for the same price you'd be paying for just the meal itself. Just keep in mind, however, that if you book the Fantasmic package for the Hollywood Brown Derby, you'll have to use two credits per person here instead of just one, but the other options are one credit. To learn more about how these Disney Dining Plan credits work before your Disney World vacation, be sure to check out our DDP playlist over on our DFB channel after this. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. For an extra cost, you can have a private photo shoot with a PhotoPass photographer inside the Tower of Terror. Yep, you heard that correctly. Your photographer will pose you inside the Hollywood Tower Hotel along with special props like a bellhop hat, a vintage suitcase, and the tower ghost hiding in the corner of the room. Sorry, am I the only one who can see it? Then... Let's carry on. So each session is 20 minutes long and costs 99 bucks plus tax. If that isn't enough time for you to really capture your spooky celebratory essence though, you can book two back-to-back -back sessions to ensure that you get all the shots that you want. Just make sure you also purchase a valid park ticket because that's not included in the price of your session or sessions. But seriously, you didn't see that ghost? What if I told you it's now standing right behind you? No, okay, that's silly. But to be fair, I have a lot of dreams about the Tower of Terror and like, actually staying in it. And so I really think that needs to happen. It would terrify me. I would cry probably, but I really, really want to stay there. <laughs> 
So here's the thing. Galaxy's Edge is a popular place, probably one of the most popular places in Hollywood Studios, with maybe Toy Story Land a close second. So being able to enjoy it without shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder crowds is not always possible. However, it's not exactly impossible either, and that's thanks to the area's spaceport bar, Oga's Cantina. Oga's is one of the few bars on Disney property for which you can get an advanced dining reservation due to its popularity. And get this, you might be able to snag some of those Oga's Cantina reservations after Hollywood Studios closes. So if Studios closes at 9, for instance, you might find that Oga's Cantina doesn't close until 10, kind of like how the flagship stores stay open for lingering guests too. That means if you make a reservation for Oga's at 9.15, you can grab a drink here before heading out. And once you do head out, you'll be able to briefly admire an empty galaxy's edge. Keyword here though, briefly. If you decide to attempt this strategy, please be mindful of the cast member's time. Cast members are stationed to be in the parks after closures no matter what, so you aren't preventing them from going home if you book a late night Oga's reservation. However, it's still best to grab your drinks, grab your picks, and wrap up the night without too much extra feet dragging so that everyone can get home at a decent hour. There are tons of strategies out there that are going to help you really rack up the points in Toy Story Mania, but we're going to stick with the first mini game you'll come across on this ride, aka Ham and Eggs, to get you all set up for success. During Ham and Eggs, you'll be tempted to go for the obvious moving animal targets first, but what you're actually going to want to do is search for the fox. Hitting the fox is going to release the hens that earn higher points than any of the targets that will be currently on the screen. Then take down the two pigs that are above the fox and a cat will appear worth 500 points. Repeat this process and the cat's going to increase in value all the way up to 2,000 points. Meanwhile, if you're on the other side of the screen further away from the fox, go ahead and take out the animals inside the barn, including the mice. If you're successful, dozens of mice will appear, all worth 2,000 points as well. Step aside, Disney Springs, we've got a whole Black Spire Outpost marketplace to explore today over in Batu. JK Disney Springs, I love you so much. Now, in the marketplace, you're going to be able to shop for a lot of Batu inspired knickknacks like hoodies and magnets and keychains and mugs, you name it. But there's also a pet store in this little shopping strip, too. Bina's Creature Stall is where you can pick up a new pet to accompany your journey throughout the galaxy. You can shop for plush and your ideal Star Wars pet, many of which which present lifelike interactive features while you're surrounded by animated versions in cages around the store. Perhaps you'd like a Dianoga trash monster of your very own, or maybe you want your own Kawakian monkey lizard to sit on your shoulder. Whatever you decide, there's one thing you can guarantee at this little shop. The merchandise here is definitely out of this world. Slam on the brakes, AJ. What incarnation is a Dapper Day? Okay, Dapper Day is a twice a year fan created event that happens at both Disney World and Disneyland. During this time, people will dress up in their very best retro Disney inspired fashion and get all dapper. If you've never been to a Dapper Day event, it's a lot of fun, even if you don't decide to participate, just because it's awesome to see all the outfits that people take the time to put together or make by hand solely for this occasion. While you can visit any of the parks, for dapper days, Hollywood Studios tends to capture that perfect dapper essence, especially if you're strolling around either Hollywood or Sunset Boulevard, aka the section of the park that captures that golden age of Hollywood. This year, dapper days will have a spring outing in the Disney World parks on April 20th and 21st. Usually Hollywood Studios will be the first day and Magic Kingdom will be the second, and then a holiday outing on December 7th and 8th. Now, Galactic Star Cruiser, the Star Wars Hotel took its final voyage this past September. When it used to be open for the short amount of time it was open for, it was, as Disney described, a part live immersive theater, part themed environment, part culinary extravaganza, and part real life role playing game. During your two day itinerary aboard this cruise, you'd also get the chance to explore the planet of Batu without needing a park ticket to do so. In order to reach Batu from the Star Cruiser, you take a transport out of the Halcyon ship, which would drop you directly into the Galaxy's Edge section of Hollywood Studios without breaking the immersion. So what's that transport area being used for inside the park now that Galactic Star Cruiser is no more? Well, it's a capture your moment check-in area. Much like the Tower of Terror photo shoot, you can also purchase a private photo shoot for Galaxy's Edge. But if you do make this reservation to do that, the old Galaxy's Edge entryway is where you're going to need to go to check in for it. You'll be able to find this check-in area right across from the milk stand. 
All right, I know I've talked about Tower of Terror like a bazillion times today, but there are so many hidden gems hiding out in this ride. So let's just hit you with a rapid fire of a few more Tower of Terror Easter eggs that you can find in the pre-show library room alone, starting now. In the library, take a look around for a pair of broken glasses sitting on top of a stack of books. These glasses are a reference to the Twilight Zone episode Time Enough at Last, where the main character breaks his glasses in the wake of a nuclear explosion, leaving him unable to read for pleasure, which sounds horrible. Now, those who have seen the Twilight Zone episode in the nick of time might spot a certain mysterious fortune teller machine that tormented William Shatner. He's that red devil looking guy up on the shelf. Not William Shatner, the fortune teller. Anyway, like the fortune teller machine, a little metal space invader sits on the same top shelf tool. The Invaders episode of the Twilight Zone showed a farm woman tormented by these very creatures. Appropriately, the library also has a pretty interesting book you should be keeping an eye out to find. You can spot a book called To Serve Man. It may remind you of the Twilight Zone episode with the same name. And don't stop looking around the library just yet. If you spot a dusty trumpet, you found another hidden gem. Jack Klugman played the trumpet as Joey Crown in the episode Passage for Trumpet. And right underneath the trumpet, look at the sheet music it's lying on top of. You're going to notice it's for a song called What? No Mickey Mouse? What kind of party is this? Whoops. Sorry, Mick. But this ride is far from being a happily ever after sort of tale. Whenever I talk about the immersive sci-fi dine-in restaurant, I always mention how it's set to look like a retro drive-in movie theater. But perhaps this restaurant is more of a set than you realize. Well, sure, the main dining room does feel like a blast from the past. The hallway leading up to the main dining room feels like you're behind the scenes on a soundstage. So what is it then? Are you in a movie or is this real life? I guess the correct answer is a little of both. Just make sure you don't pass this hallway on by without spotting a few of the doodads hiding behind the scenes because you just might find things like paper lanterns, a jet pack, filming in progress signs, and is that a bowl full of ice? Yes. Yes, it is. Sounds like something Shrek would have left behind. So maybe this is your DreamWorks crossover. Okay, so a little variety never hurt anyone, especially when it comes to your character dining. The Hollywood and Vine Character Buffet in Echo Lake hosts character meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but the characters you encounter depend on the time of day you dine. You can party with the Disney Junior characters during breakfast as you chow down on some great food at the Disney Junior Play and Dine breakfast, but during lunch and dinner, you can experience Minnie's seasonal dine. Throughout the year, Minnie Mouse is the hostess for various dinner parties where she's joined by Mickey, Goofy, and Pluto. The theme of Minnie's seasonal dine changes with each passing season. She starts things off with a tribute to the silver screen, which already happened on January 5th to March 15th this year, followed by the springtime dine, which is currently happening from March 16th to June 19th. A beach party scene is set for the year's summertime dine, which will begin June 20th, and that'll be followed by fall's Halloween dine, which in 2023 ran from August 11th to November 7th. Finally, Minnie wraps things up with her holiday dine, which kicked off on November 8th last year and ran through January 4th. Ever wanted to break Disney's rules without getting into any legal trouble? Maybe that says something about me? Anyway, now's our chance. Near the entrance to the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular Theater, you're going to spot a well with a pulley system hanging up above. Next to it, a sign says, warning, do not pull rope. But like, why be a goody two-shoes at this moment when the knot seems to be oh so deliberately slashed out? So go ahead, pull it. See what happens. But just as a warning, you might feel a little bit of guilt afterwards, so you should probably get a Wookiee cookie at Backlot Express right after to make you feel better. So Disney Genie Plus can be a major help when it comes to getting to the front of all those A-tier Hollywood Studios attraction lines without having to wait forever and ever and ever before it's your turn to ride. But sometimes you just don't want to deal with the lightning lane hassle. I get it. Totally. So how can you guarantee a shorter wait for all the Hollywood Studios rides without having to play the Genie Plus game all day long? By purchasing an After Hours party ticket. Hollywood Studios After Hours takes place in 2024 on certain nights up until August 29th. During this separately ticketed event, you can enjoy rides and entertainment, character meet and greets, and select complimentary snacks for an extra three hours after the party closes. This is a great deal, y'all. I love after hours events. It is empty in those parks. 
Now, when I say empty, I mean it's pretty empty. Capacity for after hours is limited, so there's no need for Genie Plus here. You just pick a line, jump in it, get on the ride with much more limited weight to worry about. After hours ticket prices for Hollywood Studios do vary by date, ranging from 155 to 175 plus tax. So this event can be just as expensive as a regular day park ticket, if not more so. However, you will be able to enter the park a couple of hours before the actual event kicks off, meaning if you're not already going to be in the park during those regular ticketed hours, you'll want to get your money's worth for this one by entering the park as early as 7 p.m. instead of right when the event starts at 9.30. This will also give you the chance to grab dinner and watch Fantasmic before you get started riding all the rides. Now, if you do any after hours event at any park, be sure to look at the list of rides that are open. Most of them will be, but every once in a while, there's one or two that aren't. So you wanna make sure that those aren't your one or two deal breakers. Hollywood Studios may not have the Christmas light spectacle that they once had way back when, R.I.P. Osborne Lights, but that doesn't mean this park has completely lost its merry spirit. Around the holidays, Hollywood Studios decks the halls with lots of incredible decor. I think that Hollywood Studios does the best job of decorating for Christmas, mostly because it's all this incredible stuff that feels right out of the like 40s and 50s. It's just fantastic. Now, Around the holidays, Hollywood Studios does deck the halls in Toy Story Land, too. And I'm going to focus on Toy Story Land specifically because we really don't talk as much about their festive decor as we should. And that's a shame because it is super, super creative. During past holiday seasons, since this area of the park first opened, Woody has greeted Hollywood Studios guests while sporting a white and red striped scarf. Not that creative, I understand. Just give me a second. And once you cross the threshold into the area, the decor keeps on coming. You can find seasonal spice like alien-themed ornaments, a ham-shaped Christmas cookie, oversized popcorn garland, which of course Andy would be making at school, right? And a pasta-framed piece of children's macaroni artwork. We all remember those days, right? It's even spray-painted gold, which I love. So even Rex gets in on the holiday fun. He wears a fashionable pair of cardboard reindeer antlers. The customization of your lightsaber doesn't have to stop after your Savvy's workshop experience, if you decide to make reservations for Savvy's, that is. You can continue perfecting your lightsaber just the way you want it by purchasing upgrades over at Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, too. But remember, everything you add is going to add to the price of that lightsaber, and it's already pretty expensive. Anyway, during your time at Savvy's, you'll be able to choose a default kyber crystal color, which will determine the color of your saber. This includes purple, green, green, red, or blue. Don't want one of those colors? You can also get a white or yellow kyber crystal too if you choose to purchase one from Doc Ondar's gift shop afterwards. Or you can also get one of the standard saber colors as well, just in case you had a hard time deciding when you were making your saber. Doc Ondar's also sells Jedi and Sith holocrons, and if you pop a kyber crystal in there, you'll hear the voices of famous Jedi or famous Sith if you choose a red crystal. Now, I personally have a green crystal, which means I get to hear Yoda, which is awesome. There's also a super rare black kyber crystal that may be hiding out in the red kyber crystal packaging. Now, if getting a Ronto wrap over at Ronto Roasters in Galaxy's Edge is a big time priority snack for you, which fair, I feel that way about it pretty often too, then you're going to want to know where you can get your hands on them all day long. Now, Ronto Roasters is usually where you're going to grab one of these savory galactic snacks, but this quick service closes early, like 3 p.m. That doesn't mean you can't still have a Ronto wrap for dinner though. After Ronto Roasters closes for the day, Ronto wraps will become available over at the Docking Bay 7 quick service, also in Galaxy's Edge right next door for the remainder of the evening. Just keep in mind, this will only be for the main Ronto wraps and not the veggie based Zuki wraps. So if you're looking for the vegetarian option, you'll still want to head to Ronto Roasters before 3 p.m. So listen, Hollywood Studios might not always be my favorite place for a meal, but they tend to go hard with their snack offerings. We've got the Carrot Cake Cookie at Trolley Car Cafe, which is back in my good graces, the Wookiee Cookie at Backlot Express, the Tachos at Woody's Lunchbox, and so many other sweet and savories. But before you go and buy one of our all-time favorite Hollywood Studios snacks, check and see what other seasonal snack offerings might be available during your visit, because Hollywood Studios does an amazing job at the limited time stuff, too, for the most part. 
And if you stick with just the classics, you might miss out on what could have been a new favorite treat of yours that you would have liked even more. Throughout the year, you can find seasonal lunchbox tart flavors at Woody's Lunchbox, seasonal cupcake varieties at Trolley Car Cafe, seasonal shakes at Hollywood Scoops, or maybe even a whole other seasonal treat entirely that catches you by surprise. We'll always keep you up to date on the latest Hollywood Studios treats or any new Disney treats at all that we come across while we're in the parks daily, so make sure you're signed up for our free DFB newsletter so you never fall out of the Disney snacking news loop. You can sign up at the link in the description below. So Oga's Cantina, not your standard margarita and fruity lemonade stop. The drinks and snacks served here definitely feel otherworldly. You've got the fuzzy tauntaun with a buzz button foam that'll make your lips feel numb. The bloody rancor with a meringue rancor bone on top. The best bin fizz with cloudy swirls pooling out over the rim. And here's the one we rarely ever get the chance to talk about. The non-alcoholic Oga's Obsession made of lemonade, cotton candy flavoring, and blueberry popping pearls with a bursting dried fruit mixture. This thing looks like I could put it under the microscope and study it in a science class. It's literally in a Petri dish. It is freaky looking and really it isn't a drink at all. It's more like a little jello cup and the spiked version is like a little jello shot. And that can throw you off if you aren't expecting that texture with the popping pearls and all of that stuff. But at the same time, Oga's obsession is also fruity and fun and still refreshing while making it a unique snack for kids and adults alike to try while spending some time at Oga's cooling off. Some of the best Disney secrets are often the tiniest ones. One Easter egg that carries through both Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard can be found at the base of both areas' traffic lights. All the lights are marked with the faux company name stamp Mortimer & Co. 1928, which contains reference to Mortimer Mouse. Now, Mortimer was the original name for the character who would later become our jolly good fella Mickey Mouse. And Mortimer would have never become Sweet Little Mickey if it weren't for Walt's wife, Lillian Disney, who absolutely hated Hated the name Mortimer for the character. As for the year 1928, that was the same year that Mickey Mouse debuted. Who would have thunk that some simple streetlights would hit us with not just one, but two important Easter eggs to uncover? Now, I could have probably made this entire video all about the Muppets and hidden secrets around Grand Avenue, and I know quite a few members of my team that would have appreciated that immensely, and maybe you would too. If you want it, let me know, put it in the comments. Maybe we'll do a Muppet video. But for now, I just want to take this time to really appreciate the posters hiding out in plain sight around specifically Muppet Vision 3D. If you take the time to read these posters instead of leaving the area immediately after you see the show, you're going to find some really punny knee slappers. For instance, there's Fozzie Bear looking for you to hire him as your go-to comedian. No, really, he needs a job. He'll even throw in a free rubber chicken if you call today. The Ricky Rat Show advertisement, Remember everyone, star spelled backwards is rats. Frankie's formal wear, who promises to make your special events specialer. And lots of funny and punny Muppet movie spoofs, too, like To Have and Have More, Here's Looking at You, Pig, and Star Chores for the exhausted Miss Piggy who swore she'd never sign another autograph again. May the purse be with you. There are a lot more posters where that came from, so make sure to stop for a minute. Get a good laugh in before you get on with your park day. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've talked a lot about the good old days of Hollywood Studios before it was Hollywood Studios, but I can't help it. Those are just awesome memories for me personally. So maybe that's why I keep finding myself booking reservations for Mama Melrose Ristorante Italiano. On the walls of Mama's, you're going to find photos of celebrities. Now, these photos have actually been saved from the days of MGM's Star Today promotion. You see, back in the day, Star Today was a special offering where celebrities would come to MGM to sign autographs for guests. It wasn't a long-standing promotion, but supposedly Imagineers saved some of the photos that the celebrities would use for autographs and hung them up on the walls here. Basically, if you're a fan of that old school MGM vibe and 1980s stars and their hair, you might really enjoy your time here. And despite all the changes that have happened in this park, Mama Melrose has sort of remained this little time capsule. It's kind of the same, at least in terms of atmosphere and decor. And that always hits me in the feels. Poor Roger. I still love you, you silly little bunny dude. Now, if you're looking for more Roger Rabbit hidden gems around Hollywood Studios, make sure to look above the Hollywood and Vine restaurant over in Echo Lake. Because I think they've got a broken window that's in need of fixing. Don't worry, though. This hole is very much supposed to be there, and it's very much rabbit-shaped. Roger Rabbit-shaped. You can find the silly effect next to the Eddie Valiant Private Investigator tribute window, which is also extremely fitting, don't you think? 
Things can get a little kooky on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, but that's all part of the fun. What makes this ride even more fun, though, is when you start tracking down the hidden secrets inside. So let's just talk about a few for now, and I'll leave the rest up to you to uncover. First, the Dapper Dans. In the very first ride scene, a quadruplet tandem bike drives by on your right side with four passengers. If you pay special attention to what they're wearing, you'll notice their outfits look just like the ones the Dapper Dans Barbershop Quartet in Magic Kingdom normally sports. Next secret, Yen Sid Valley. Watch out for a directional sign in the first and last scenes, which each have one arrow pointing to Yen Sid Valley. This is a special reference to the sorcerer's name in Fantasia from The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which of course is also Disney spelled backward. And we got Oswald back, our little rabbit friend, with another Easter egg to share. There's a newspaper near Jackhammer Beat in the city scene with a headline that reads Oswald wins. This indeed clearly refers to Walt Disney's long lost rabbity pal finally claiming a victory after all these years. Only at Disney World can you visit a fictional vacation destination within a magical vacation destination and without needing an extra park ticket. Over at the Mickey Shorts Theater, you can watch Mickey, Minnie, and the whole gang recount some of their vacation adventures. And afterward, you'll head out of the theater and be met with several photo ops based on some of the other Mickey Shorts. The main draw here has to be Potato Land. I mean, you can get your photo taken with the potato. This is an honor bestowed upon only the greatest Disney folk of our land, so if you can find Find it good for you. Now, make sure to keep looking up the next time you're in the Toydarian toy shop in Galaxy's Edge. Hanging above the ceiling here are toys locked in reenactments of famous scenes from the Star Wars franchise. These include the Millennium Falcon escaping Imperial ships by hiding in an asteroid field and Obi-Wan Kenobi dueling Darth Vader on the Death Star. All right, y'all are incredible. This was so much fun to tell you about, and I hope you get to experience all or at least most of these amazing Hollywood Studios experiences during your next trip, too. Now, before you head out, don't forget that free Hollywood Studios quick guide I told you about earlier, which you can download over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Hollywood Studios. Be sure to join our newsletter. You can join in the link in the description below. And if you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe. We got five videos a week for you, but we also have a bunch more of these 50 amazing things videos. We've got one for each park. I think we have Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios done. We've got Animal Kingdom coming our way. So definitely go watch the other ones when you're done here. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.